football is the home of the Super Bowl. And this historic matchup is brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Vikings and the Chiefs, and it comes your way next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Tonight, it is all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy. As it'll be the AFC champion, Kansas City Chiefs, taking on the champions from the NFC, the Minnesota Vikings. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Uh, Charles, we don't like to throw around the word dynasty loosely, but for the Chiefs, it applies. I mean, they're looking for their third title now in five years. And with the way this league is configured now, it absolutely applies. I think you're totally on target. Remember, they lost a Super Bowl in there, too. So to be back for the fourth time in five years in today's NFL, that's pretty incredible. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, this may be their best chance to finally break the goose egg, Charles. They've been here four times previously. The 2023 season has one game left. Here we go. Super Bowl 58 underway from Vegas. And we will not have a return, so the first drive of this Super Bowl will begin at the 25. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they will be led out by a guy certainly still trying to prove himself here in the league, the young rookie quarterback. And as we know and as we've discussed here in the run-up to this game, this is history in the making. The first rookie quarterback to ever start in a Super Bowl. An absolutely tremendous accomplishment, something no one else has done. But he doesn't want to just go down as the first to make a Super Bowl. He's told us all week he's here to win it. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Back to throw here. And he fires one, but incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. So here are the Chiefs now under their veteran head coach, Andy Reid. They'll be led out by their 6'5 quarterback, the former Missouri Tiger, Blaine Gabbert. And no doubt he's living out a dream right now. He's had dating back to his first days of playing football as a kid. But he certainly can't get lost in the moment right now. There's still a Super Bowl to be played, and his offense, they're looking to him to be their leader. You can take it all in when it's over. Right now, you've got the biggest game of your life to win. His throw incomplete. Well, that's not the way you want to start. A first pass attempt and a first drop all in one. Well, you've got plenty of time to make up for it, but obviously not the way you want to get things started. You've got to shake that off and get going. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this. On first and 10, Gabbard. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And it's second down. Now a toss left for Pacheco. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. To throw is Gabbard. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Fourth down, so Kansas City sends out Tommy Townsend. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25. It will. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. 
And Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit. Sometimes better. it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That, too. <laughs> Try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. And to find the open man. That's complete. Down to the 10. Touchdown, Vikings! Justin Jefferson with a first touchdown of this Super Bowl and a long one at that. And the Vikings put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Charles, every time that he makes one of these plays, I, I think the front office, they get a bigger and bigger collective smile because they feel more confident that they have found their guy, their future at quarterback. And they should feel that way. It's obvious he's a big part of why they have such a good record this season. You're right about the bright future as well, and by association, a bright future for the franchise, too. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this taken in at the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Kansas City taking the field for their second drive. They trail early on in this Super Bowl as they come up first and 10. Here's Pacheco to begin the drive. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Gabbard's throw here complete to Kelsey. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. He was a 1,000-yard receiver during the regular season, and that's his first catch of this Super Bowl, and he picks up the first down. <laughs> and I feel a little bit like a traitor as a former defender because that big man did not want to go down and refused to go down. If you're a defender and you'll get the right angle on a big tight end like him, he can run right through you like you're not even there, and he did a lot of that on that play. First down, Gabbard. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Open man here, it's the tight end, Kelsey. His second catch of the Super Bowl, and it's good enough for a first down. That was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. Out of the gun, Gabbard. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Now Gabbard. He'll drop this off to Pacheco. And he can only manage to take this thing to the 38, well shy of the first down. A gain of nine, not enough, and it's fourth down. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in down. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The 
They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Oh, he had a man open. He overshot him. It's incomplete. Oh, my goodness. He had his tight end running free down the middle. I think maybe if you don't try to go for the home run ball and just kind of get it to him, just put it on him, this play will work out. But he let him too much, and that's a tough incompletion to handle. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Now on third down, an extra DB out there for the Chiefs. Looking to throw. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. And that's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down. And third down defense going to be vital in this game. Able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. They trail early on in this Super Bowl as they come up first and 10. Throwing, Gabbard. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with a short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. His second catch in the Super Bowl, and it's good enough for a first down. When you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Now a second and ten. Again, it's Gabbard. That's complete to his receiver, McCoy. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he get a good head of steam going. Three catches for him now in this first quarter of the Super Bowl. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That's a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Officially, no gain on the play, and it's second down. Gabbard to throw it. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Now right where this set of down started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. So the completion good for six yards. And that's going to make it fourth down. Gabbard. Trying to find his tight end, Kelsey, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Micah Parsons. And the Vikings are going to get the ball back on the turnover as they hold on fourth down. Now it's first and ten after a costly penalty there on fourth down. Play fake. Gabbard. Now that's to the left sideline and incomplete. And a smart play there. He's probably saying, I wish I would have done that on the last drive instead of throwing the interception. A second down throw now for Gabbard. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. To throw. Gabbard. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 
Three catches for him now in this first quarter of the Super Bowl. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And the deliver there is that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set him up with a first and goal. They'll throw again. Gabbert. That is caught at the seven-yard line. They'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. From the shotgun, it's Gabbert. And that's caught. It's Kelsey. Touchdown, Kansas City. It's a six-yard touchdown pass, and the Chiefs have taken the lead. We're still in the first quarter, but it's apparent they're going to have to come up with a different defensive game plan for him because right now he's kind of having his way against that defense and has added a touchdown to the list. How do you slow him down? They're going to have to mix up some coverages, maybe change who's guarding him. Extra point by Butker is on target, and the lead is now 10 to 7. So that drive spanned five plays, and it culminates in a Travis Kelsey touchdown. Here's the Chiefs' kickoff unit now as they'll send this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. They'll look to throw here. Throw left side, complete. That's Moss. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Now a third and six. They'll look to throw. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. His second catch in the Super Bowl, and it's good enough for a first down. This Super Bowl, of course, just a huge one for this head coach. The first time he's walked the sidelines in a game of this magnitude, and you know, I might normally ask the cliche, what's going through his mind right now? But maybe the better question, CD, what do you think are the pitfalls of being a first-time head coach in this game? Well, you know it's something that he thought about, Brandon, and he had to, and he was thinking about it long before he got to this stage. As the season progressed and he saw that his team was good, if he was smart, he started to make plans right then and there. Reach out to other coaches who've been there before. Find out how they handled winning, losing, handling all the ticket situations, travel, practice, all those things. And then trust your gut, make your best decision, and put it all out there and give your team their best chance to win. On second down, they'll run it here. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. They'll look to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, after the standard two-week layoff, you always wonder, how is your offense going to respond and come out and play here in the Super Bowl? Well, they got a great answer right there and almost a sigh of relief on that side of the field because now they've got to feel like they can use their entire playbook and game plan for this one. They'll set up a throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, how about the challenge we're seeing here in this game early? Man coverage against some fleet receivers. That time, the defense won. Here's second and eight. And his throw here is incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, that play there was certainly a scouting report special because Covered was all too aware that this close to the end zone, 
he's going to become a bigger weapon for that offense. And they were there to help force the incompletion. And his kick is indeed good. And that will knot us up at 10. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made him kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. The KC offense out of the huddle, ready for their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. They go play action. Gabber. And looking for McLaurin, but this is intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. The Vikings now heading on to the field. They'll have very good starting field position here as they try to break our tie, and they start first and 10. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And this will be caught by his big wide receiver. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. So from the 26-yard line, here's second down and one. Jefferson going to go in motion right. And they'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. Oh, fine work there as he gets this thing down to the 11-yard line. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. Down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. Second and four. They could still get a first down without scoring. Hands it off out of the gun. Yeah, he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings have taken the lead. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line, because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Chiefs offense set to go. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes, get a little more momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal is not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. He's up to 70 yards now in this first half receiving as he's got a first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Gabbard on first down. Open man is Fulton. He's got it. So the completion good for seven there. And that's going to bring up second down. Play action now, Gabbard. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Micah Parsons leading the surge there as he drops him for a loss of six. The Chiefs on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and eight. A 
throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. On is the punter Townsend as he gets this one away. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. They'll set up to throw. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. And yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. A handoff as they run the counter play. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Here is third down and four. They're going to look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Well, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. But the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did, for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. Back to throw now on first down. Throw left side, complete to Moss. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Now a shotgun snap as they look to throw. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. They'll look to throw again. And that's going to be incomplete. The Kansas City defense tough to throw on there. And now it's fourth down. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. There he goes left side. The fake field goal catches everyone by surprise. And the Vikings continue to look good here in the first half of this Super Bowl. So a fake field goal run in for the touchdown. That can be a huge momentum swing. And that's got to drive a defensive coach and a special teams coach crazy. Someone else running it in on a fake field goal when you're supposed to be alert for it. Terrific play by the offense. Not so much by the defense. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead now up to 14. And they'll start at the 25 as McKinnon decides against returning it. So now here are the Chiefs as their offense makes their way back out onto the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Gabbard's throw into the hands of McLaurin. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. Now Gabbard. They'll check this one down to Pacheco. Short completion, just four yards. And that'll bring up second down. Play fake, Gabbard. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. 
They certainly thought he had an open book beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. On third down, Gabbard. That is caught. They'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A big play there on the catch and run, and the Chiefs are going to get a fresh set of downs. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. A first down throw for Gabbard. This to McClellan out on the left side. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. To throw is Gabbard. And his throw is incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Off the play fake, Gabbard. And he'll spot Higgins open left side. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. Gabbard here again. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an outer boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Now Gabbert. A quick throw there is incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Hey, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. It's Kelsey. Touchdown, Kansas City. Travis Kelsey, his second touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Chiefs have got it back to within a score. No surprise there. Third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. Extra point by Butker is on target, and that cuts the lead to 24-17. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. With the football going back to the Vikings offense. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth. If you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now, because... Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. A big play there for Minnesota. 71 yards. I'll tell you what, this is not going to be a fun discussion at halftime for this defense. They've been absolutely taken advantage of in the first half. And here's another play for big, big yardage. didn't take long one play and we're already looking at a first and goal situation and they'll run on the inside handoff and he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown a great effort there his second touchdown of this Super Bowl and the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead now up to 14. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. And out come the Chiefs now. Well, this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. 
But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do. So I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. Here's Gabbert. That's complete to his receiver, McLaurin. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. Here's Tommy Townsend on to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Vikings will take over here first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. They'll look to throw here. And he's got his big wide receiver complete. And they get 17 more on that one and another first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Here's a second and eight. Back to throw again. Out route to Jefferson, and he's got it. So a decent game there, but not their fourth consecutive first down like they had on the first three plays. You sound almost disappointed there. You want to fire the offensive coordinator on that one? <laughs> They've gotten into a rhythm. I thought they were just going to keep going. Well, almost a win for the defense, but if that's your win, you're not doing very well right now. Now the Vikings will send out the special teams crew here for a field goal try. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. And this one is right down Broadway. And that will extend their lead even further. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And they'll start at the 25 as McKinnon decides against returning it. Out now the Chiefs offensive unit ready to do battle again. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. A second down throw now for Gabbard. This throw is going to be incomplete. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hope it didn't come through on this play and get this series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. The Vikings going to signal for the first to their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. The Vikings going to take over now late in this first half. And with a three-score lead already, this is not time for a momentum change, so I'd imagine they'd be happy to just take this into the locker room. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Here's second and three. Back to throw. Now they 
set up the screen. That's complete. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Again, he'll drop to throw. Complete. Jefferson to target. And that's good for a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. They'll throw now on the final play. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. So we've reached halftime here in the Super Bowl. As we send you to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. What a season this has been. Hard to believe it ends tonight. As we'll get back to you guys for the second half of this Super Bowl in just a moment. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. These two teams sat through a longer-than-usual 30-minute wait, but we're back in action here in this Super Bowl. Jarek McKinnon to take it out of the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. The Chiefs ready to go on offense to begin quarter number three. And right now, their chances of hoisting that Lombardi trophy not looking too great, but perhaps that long halftime, maybe it did them a world of good. But there's ever a chance to regroup. It's in this game, right? Because you do have that long halftime, a chance to really assess things and maybe make some changes and true adjustments. They played great all year long. That was the worst first half of the season for them. They're hoping to put it behind them and come out punching here in the second half. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. Here's Gabbard now. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and it'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring us to a third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. To the air again, Gabbard. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, if they have any designs on getting back into this football game in the second half, they're going to need to be much sharper offensively than they were on this opening possession. Not much happening here, and it'll lead to a fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Fights off the defender. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And that's what friends are for. <laughs> right. And as the returner, you know who you're buying dinner for later. Oh, without a doubt, because he just took care of you and your team in a big way. You know, you turn it over there, that's a big momentum changer and put your defense in a bad spot. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. Kevin O'Connell clearly unhappy with that call, and he's thrown that red Reading challenge flag out underneath. on the field. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So score one for Kevin O'Connell. His decision to throw the challenge flag, a good one. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Second and ten. Second 
They're going to look to throw. That's to the sideline and incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So the big return had him fired up, but in the end, the offense stalls out. They only muster three. Yeah, the excitement was there after the return, but they didn't move the ball at all after that. They didn't even get a first down. And they'll start at the 25 as McKinnon decides against returning it. The Chiefs offense now making their way back onto the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Gabbard. DeAndre Hopkins making the catch. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That one covers 29 yards, first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. Right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. They go play action. Gabbard. Oh, and that is incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Now this throw caught left side. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. From the red zone now, Gabbert. And that's too tall for his receiver. It's incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. They'll throw again. Gabbert. And it's caught. And in for the Chiefs touchdown. Terry McLaurin, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Chiefs are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Those are the touchdowns that aren't just scored on Sundays or on Monday night. Those are the ones that are scored during the week because they had that preparation in a great route run. Oh, I love that observation because you don't just roll out on game day and say, okay, go run this route and let's get it done. That means exactly what you said. The practice had to occur beforehand, which led to the timing, which led to the touchdown. Extra point by Butker is on target, and that cuts this lead down to 13. Taken at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and 10. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Uh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. 
Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, and he's taken down, a chief sack. Daniel Hunter able to get him down for a loss of 11. And it brings up fourth down. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. There's Terry McLaurin, such an exciting pass catcher as this offense comes out for their next drive. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good, but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once. But boy, he can explode at any moment. Yeah, and when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, makes, you do. It you makes get, you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. To throw is Gabbard. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlines, but incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And now another one thrown incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. They had that first half lead, but they have been shut down here in this third quarter, so time to retool a bit. And probably need to tap into that emotional vein that gets them back to really playing hard and effectively. Because a lot of times we think it's just play calls and this isn't working and they're shutting them down. Sometimes when you get a lead, you lose your edge. You don't play quite as hard. That's what they're looking for here. Trying to get that edge back as they've watched this lead shrink a little. Second and five. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That one, a first down pickup of eight. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Wow, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. They'll look to throw again. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs' 44-yard line. A good pick up there, 22. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. They go play action here on first down. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Here's second and ten. He'll look to throw. He's going to try and go deep again. And this is caught. Touchdown! A big play there. 44 yards. And the Vikings will extend their third quarter lead here in this Super Bowl. 
Well, Charles, kind of the future of this franchise on display right there. You had a rookie throwing it, a rookie catching it, and taking it into the end zone. Could you imagine if we were in the owner's box right now and we could look at the front office and see the grins on their faces to see the present making plays and knowing what the future will bring with these youngsters going out and making big-time moments happen for this team. Needed a couple yards for the two-point try. They go to the ground game, and it works. And sometimes it's the exact right thing to do because a lot of teams play you for the pass, so you spread people out, decide to run the football, you often find good running lanes. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. Out of the end zone comes McKinnon. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled it to 15. And the Chiefs offense ready to go again. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and 10. Out of the gun, Gabbard. Caught, Kelsey, left side. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. From the 23, here's second and a couple. Off the play fake, Gabbard slings this deep from McLaurin. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Good open field tackling there. A 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And it will be Vikings ball first and ten. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction. Watch it. That to the sideline, and it's intercepted. Picked by Kimber Fuller, and he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. Well, it certainly felt like he was going to challenge this defense no matter what, and he stepped up and tried to throw it to the outermost edge of the zone coverage, and they were more than ready for him. The problem now is if they are limited in what they're doing throwing the football, they got to figure out how to move it without being able to throw it to the outside and throw it downfield. Here's the Kansas City offense now as they get set to take over. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. They'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark it down at the 9. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Gabbard. Here's Higgins out of the right side. Three yards is the game that time. Second and goal. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him. Why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Gabbard here again. And he's got it. Touchdown, Chiefs. Terry McLaurin, his second touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Chiefs get a bit closer. 
I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? <laughs> you know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Extra point by Butker is on target. And the lead will be cut down to 14. Here's the Chiefs kickoff unit now as they'll send this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25. Now the Vikings offense gets set to tank over here. Their lead down from 21 to 14, but still sitting in a great spot. Up two scores here in the third quarter. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And incomplete on the deep ball. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. On play action, they'll throw. And he's got this to Jefferson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 18 yards the game for number 18. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. They'll look to throw now on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Back to throw again. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Again, he'll drop to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust. And that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. A good pick up there. 26 yards. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've got their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Now back to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. This is caught. Touchdown, Vikings! A great play there with his third touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Vikings are feeling good as they extend their lead in this Super Bowl. So on this drive, the rookie leads him into the end zone, Charles, and that helps cancel out the points that were created on the previous drive when he threw the interception. Yeah, let's give some credit to this rookie because instead of hanging his head, after his mistake leads to a touchdown, he comes back out and he's firing and made up for it right there. A well-executed series helps reestablish some confidence in him to run this offense. Minnesota's kick team ready and the Vikings boom it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. And Kansas City's offense now set and ready to go. A strong showing their last time out. They scored the touchdown, but Charles, they look up and they're still down double digits, so you feel like just to keep pace, this drive probably needs to end in the end zone as well. Yeah, and I think the best move for them is to not worry about how far they are down on the scoreboard, but to just remember the last drive and how it ended. 
Go ahead and try and repeat that. Then you can look at the scoreboard and see where this game is. We are through three quarters of play here from Allegiant Stadium in Super Bowl 58. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Now there's just one quarter that remains in this edition of the biggest game of the year, the Super Bowl, as we get set for the fourth quarter. Gabbert now on second down. That's complete once again to Hopkins. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Okay, so now the question, how did he get that wide open? Well, we both know that he shouldn't because from the time they handed out scouting reports before this game, he was circled, starred, everything. Find him, cover him. But sometimes you can scheme a guy open. You put the receivers in a bunch. Maybe you move some motion. Maybe you put them on the backside of a formation, and all of a sudden you've got a better matchup. Every now and then, the offensive guys, they figure a way to get him open, even with everyone keeping eyes on him. And that's certainly a guy they want to keep trying to scheme open. To the air again, Gabbard. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Gabbard. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Chiefs first down as they pick up a big chunk of yards to boot. 18 of them felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. Stop to get it done, as you noted, and they did. A first down throw for Gamber. It's Kelsey on the ground. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Again, it's Gabbard. And that's caught left side by the tight end, Gray. His first catch of this Super Bowl, and it'll be good for a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first. And this is going to be intercepted. And the Vikings are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Well, I mean, field goals probably aren't going to cut it at this point. This was touchdown or bust, and unfortunately for them, it turned out to be bust. Yeah, they're feeling like they've got to force the issue here, maybe take some chances they wouldn't have earlier in the game. But give credit to this defense. They've really stood tall throughout, and they come up with the interception in the end zone. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, and now the rookie's free. Down the sideline he goes. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there. 75 yards. And the Vikings are starting to pour it on to the game's biggest stage. They are running away with this Super Bowl. 
Yet another touchdown in what has just been a high-scoring affair, a fun one to watch, and it's the rookie quarterback, Charles, coming through with yet another touchdown pass to pad the lead. Did we come into this game where defense was optional? Because it certainly feels that way, right? But when you look at the scoreboard, this rookie, he has his team moving a little bit quicker pace than his opponents. The entire offense is going to get plenty of praise, but I think these coaches have to be especially happy with what their quarterback has done. KC's offense ready to take over. And it's becoming more and more apparent that this is just not going to be their night. That Lombardi trophy so close, but the expectations simply have not matched the results as they start on this drive first and ten. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again, second and ten from the 25. On the ground, this is the former Viking, Jarek McKinnon. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Desperation time. Gabbard on fourth. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Gabbert now to throw on first down. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. I'm not even sure I know who this guy is out there playing right now. This is very unlike him, one of the most accurate guys in the league, totally off his game right now. I don't know. I was going to ask you what you pin it on, but defensively, they've been pretty solid. Well, sometimes, you know, those defenders, they get into the receivers pretty well, and if they chip away at their timing, it's going to affect what you're doing throwing the ball as well. Gabbard on third and two. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And that gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. From the 34 now, here's first and ten. Here's Gabbard now. No hesitations, they go right back to Kelsey. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now a second and two. They'll throw again. Gabbert able to find Gray here. His second catch of the Super Bowl, and it's good enough for a first down. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Gabbard. And in for the Chiefs touchdown. T. Higgins. An 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Chiefs get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. He's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, CD. And well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, and I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense. And he made sure to let his quarterback know, just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him, and he delivered and made it a three-score game. The Vikings head out to take over once again. And they are trying to play it cool down on the sidelines, but they know that they are very close now to wrapping this thing up and letting the celebration begin. A Super Bowl title within reach now as they try to polish this thing off. Deron Payne, the big D tackle there to make the stop. And they'll keep leaning on the running game back to the ground. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. 
And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. He'll look to throw. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. Well, their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns. And it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. And now here comes Kansas City. And their Super Bowl hopes are dwindling here in the fourth. That AFC crown from two weeks ago starting to seem like a distant memory. And this one just has not gone as they had hoped. First down, Gabbard. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. Here's Gabbard. Open man here. It's the tight end, Kelsey. Yeah, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. On first and 10, Gabbard. Another pass into the reliable hands of Kelsey. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's another first down as they look his way again, this time 19 yards. From the shotgun, it's Gabbard. Over the middle, he finds Higgins. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Uh, great coverage down in the end zone. He's scanning the field, looking, looking. No one ever came open. So in the end, he makes the best decision and just fires it over the end line. And that's caught. It's Kelsey. Touchdown, Kansas City. Travis Kelsey with his third touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Chiefs have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept him out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on him. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. And the Vikings able to recover. The hands team does its job. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Big Derek Brown making the stop. Second and six. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Back to throw. And the pressure gets there. He'll go down. It's a sack. And it is going to bring us to the two-minute warning. Multiple defenders getting home there for a loss of 11. And here's Ryan right now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. And this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. So the Chiefs now down by two touchdowns. A minute 54 on the clock. They've come so far this year, but they need two quick scores late in this Super Bowl. Gabbard's throw into the hands of McLaurin. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Gabbard's throw caught by Higgins. 
And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. And that one complete once again to Higgins. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Gabbard here again. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Now Gabbard. And he's going to go down here and sack. They push him back to the 34. What a Super Bowl it's been to this point. Now a critical third down here. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. Fourth down, Gabbard. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he takes this one into the end zone, and all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. you got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high-percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Extra play by Butker is on target. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So still a chance with just over 20 seconds to go, but they need to get this one back, no doubt. And the Vikings' hands team able to recover, and that should just about do it. The risk-reward of the onside kick, when you don't get it, the risk comes out to play, and here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything, because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them, and field position leads you to that type of play calling. And whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things, now that they've given up that type of field position, the advantage has switched to their opponent. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. The Chiefs now going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. And he will have a Viking first down, and that should be the one that gets him to the finish line. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. The Chiefs quickly now going to use the last of their timeouts. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. The Minnesota Vikings are the Super Bowl champions, and the Lombardi Trophy is going back to the land of 10,000 lakes. For the victors getting to hoist that Lombardi Trophy, you know, we've talked to guys that have done it, and they say there's no better feeling in sports. I don't know how there can be. The, the journey to get to this game is incredible. And then to finally break through and win it when all eyes are on this game alone because there's nothing else going on, that's just got to be absolutely amazing. That, the task, incredible. The accomplishment, forever.